Hello and welcome to Infinity. In the first video in this short series we looked at changing and tinting a skin with a fill layer. We're going to do that again but use some different methods around it to give you more flexibility in how you do things. So we'll start off, we'll go to stock images here, search for face and grab a suitable image, this one will do, drag that in here and thank you to the artist there. And so go back to the layers panel here and we're now going to pick a colour for the fill layer. So go up to the pipette, drag it down and over the cheek there you've got a nice range. So we'll pick something in the middle there like that. Then click on the pipette again, which transfers it to be the primary colour here and shows here we've got it's a straight line so it's orange. Green is down a bit so it's a bit more towards the red and then what we'll do now is put in a fill layer so layer new fill layer which brings out that color and last time we went for the blend mode here with the normal we went down to soft light this time we're going to do something different we're going to start off here with multiply it's going to look a bit odd at first and then we're going to go layer invert to that takes that away so it inverts the built-in mask. Then we get a paintbrush tool here and get white as our primary colour here. So we paint in white it will bring that back. It will look a bit odd at first but don't worry about that because we are going to fix things like that later on. So we just paint over this here. We just want to avoid the eyes when we're doing this and also avoid the lips Don't worry if you overshoot because we can always fix that afterwards here. In fact, sometimes it's a little bit easier to just kind of like go over the edge and then remove it afterwards. Or you can, of course, use a mask and selection and so on. So to get rid of the bit out there we don't want, we're now painting in black because we're painting on the mask, remember. And that will take away that extra bit we don't want. And if you've overshot back again, just go back to white and paint it backwards and forwards. And you can zoom in, you can do it a lot better that way. So that'll do for now. Now then, it still looks rather odd. So this is the trick now with this. As we go to blend options or blend ranges, and we're going to go to the right hand graph here. And we're going to pull down the right hand one here. And what it means is don't apply this to the lights. So now it's only being applied to the shadows, so you're getting more contrast from the shadows whilst we're preserving the lights. We can also uncheck the linear there so that we can have a nice curve here and find a useful point for this. What we can do as well is, if it's still a bit strong, is to go to the opacity here and turn this down to something that's suitable for us. So there we go. That's one before and after thing. What we can do as well with this is we can go to, if I go to the move tool here, and I've got the color here. In the first video, we played around with the red, green, and blue here. But what you can also do is change this here. So go to the red, green, and blue, and go to HSL. Now we can change the hue, the saturation, and luminosity separately. So I can make this different colors without changing anything else but let's just leave that there for now because I can also change the saturation of this so it'll get the color more intense or less an effect in, the, in terms of the change and to make it lighter and darker. So we've got quite a good potential here for what we do with it and this is just a little bit easier sometimes than red, green and blue. It depends on how you think. We'll do one more method with this. We'll just call this one multiply because this is about going for the darks and making them darker. We'll go the other way around now. So I'll just hit Control J to duplicate that. The opposite of multiply is screen. And so we're going to put, now go up here and down here with the screen. We'll turn off the multiply. So now we're working on the lights 
here. And we need to do this, we need, it still looks odd because I haven't changed that. We need to change that to screen. There we go. That's better. So now we're working on changing the contrast through through using the lighter areas of the picture. Again, we can change the use the opacity just to start us off and adjust that afterwards. Play with that and then bring it down to something that kind of looks reasonable. So there we go, the two different ways with the screen and the multiply and also both using the blend options. You can make quite a significant change there. Anyway, that's it and thank you very much for watching.